feel like he can play inside, outside, uh, returns kicks. So we're excited to have him, um, you know, played in a Big Ten. Big Big Ten, great conference, was very productive. To me, was one of the top receivers in the – in the uh, in college football last year and so to add him to the the guys already on the staff um i couldn't be more excited yeah you see he's got he was i think he was the i think he was the 2021 big 10 special teams player of the year uh he can kick return he can punt return uh he's got versatility to play all three positions for us on offense um so a ton of value in what he can bring to us um, particularly early on he, he's got a uh, he's got a path to see the field potentially in, in competition as a returner uh, at both returner spots. Uh, he's got flexibility as a receiver, and he's got a ton of production uh, in a good conference. And so he was uh, at the spot that we were at uh, in the fourth round. Felt like he was a no-brainer ad with a guy that's got a lot of ability to help us uh, down the road here. Not a, not a burner, but and I, I'm, I'm going way back in the old school, but like Fred Bolitnikoff, great runner, great hands. Is he that type of guy if you ever have? Yeah, I mean, he ran four four three at the combine, so he's one of the yeah, pretty good, faster than I was. So, uh, um, so he has enough speed, and and uh, you know, I went to his pro day and, and saw him up close and personal, and um, he's fast enough to play to give you some reps on the outside, um, and he's just a great route runner, very um, really big into technique, um, so uh, can get in out of his breaks. So we're we're excited to have him, and uh, he'll add some value to this roster. Yeah, there's no question about that. I mean, he, the Iowa offense is is much different than Purdue's. Um, Purdue is always, you know, in the last handful of years, feels like has put out really productive players statistically, and, and he's no different. But um, you saw the traits at Iowa. You saw his returnability at Iowa, um, and, he, and he he really bet on himself at, at an offense that featured the passing game a little more. And it turns out that. Uh, he was capable of being a really productive receiver as well. So um, you saw all the things that you like about him at Iowa, and then he really shined this year uh, with, with more opportunities. Frank, caught a lot of balls. Kind of how did he get open so much? And also, it looks like he was a good red zone, red zone threat as well. Uh, what was he doing to make sure he was a red zone? Yeah, a combination of a lot of things. Um, you know, he has great ball skills. Uh, anytime it's a, he's in a 50-50 contested catch situation, he seemed to come down with him. And, uh, and so, Really, everybody on our roster, all the receivers that we have, have great ball skills. And so he adds to that as a guy that no matter where you throw the ball, he's going to make the play. Um, he's, a, he's a technical route runner. And so if it's a 15-yard route, he's going to run 15. If it's you know 12 yards and, and he's going to get 12, he knows how to manipulate coverages, the, de the defenders at the top of his routes. He just knows how to get open. Uh, he's, he's a football player, and, uh, and that's what we need. And, you know, very similar to when I was in Indianapolis with Peyton Manning, with Joe, uh, you know, Joe, you, he wants you to be in the right spot at the right time. And, and that's what uh, Charlie does. He's going to be in the right spot. He's someone that Joe can count on. He's going to be able to count on. And, and every, all the receivers we have are, are those type of guys that um, Joe counts on. He has confidence in. He knows they're going to run the right routes, do the right things. And, and so we're excited to have him. Yeah, very important. Um, you know, you've got to have you got to have a nuance to running routes, especially in the slot. And he does. He understands how to get open, and um, and so we're excited to have him. And and that's going to uh, play a huge role in, in what he does here. Brian, when you're going through all the small receivers that were in this draft in this middle part, what do you look for to see this guy can that won't hinder him at this stage? Is there a, a trait or some part about those guys that, that shines through? And was there something? Yeah, he. I mean, he's not as small as some of the guys. Um, I think in this draft class, but um, you look for a trait of some kind that will let you know that he can, that player can uh, provide something of value. Whether it's a returnability, whether it's they're great separators at the top of the route, whether they got great speed. Um, there's a lot of things these guys have uh, that check boxes, you know, and that's what you look for is uh, a trait that you feel like can contribute to, to your team. And uh, the thing about Charlie is that he's he checks quite a few of them. Um, and he's he's a little bit on, he's a little bit bigger. Uh, he weighed in, I think he was like 175 at the combine, but but he's played at a heavier weight too. So he's got some 
um, play strength to him. Um, he's not going to get knocked around like some of the smaller guys do, uh, but he does. He has great ball skills, which is a, is a big part of it. Um, you know, really can catch the ball away from his body, does a great job coming out of the break, getting extended, creating separation at top of routes. Um, so those are the things when you look at when you're trying to determine who can help you the most, you're trying to find traits like that. I mean, he's got several of them, and there's, a, like I said, a path to him helping us uh, quickly if he performs well um, as a returner. The returner part, um, what makes you confident that – He's a decisive runner. Um, I'll let Troy talk a little more about the all the all the traits of him. But you can just see he makes he makes really good decisions. Um, he's going to catch the ball. He's sure-handed, which is a huge part of the of the return game process. Um, but I, I just think that he's got and he's got enough speed to, to go score touchdowns, and he has in his career. So um, those are the things that that translate, particularly when you see the decisiveness in, in the return game that, that really allows them to um, hit get the ball vertical at the field and, and find lanes and, and break open returns that could be 8 to 12 yards or turn in 50 or, 50 or 60 uh, yard returns. And if there's anything, Troy, you want to add to that? I know you studied that a lot more. Than yeah, I know you said it all. I mean, ball security is number one, and, and he has great hands, great ball skills, great judgment. And so he'll, you know, there should, he should be able to go back there and, and do exactly what he did in the, in college and and uh, and add ex, you know explosive uh, element to the return game because of his speed and and because he's decisive and he hits it. So um, there'll be good competition for that spot. Well, we've seen it with TB, obviously, the, the mechanical, the the uh, skill of running routes in the red zone. How important that is? Is that something uh, Charlie has? Yeah, we want to be able to run routes all over the field, um, but especially in the red zone, you know, when the field gets shorter and and uh, you need to score touchdowns, um, you know, he knows how to run routes, and so um, he's going to be fun to work with. I'm excited to get my hands on him and, and get to work and and um, you know just allow him help him to get better. But I think he'll add that element in the red zone wherever he, wherever he plays and and what whatever. Um, position we are on the field. He, he just knows how to run routes, knows how to get open, knows how to catch the ball and, and make plays. And, and so that's what, uh, that's what all the guys in our receiver room know how to do. And so he'll, he'll be another guy to do that. Do you think his skill set, is it similar to TB and what he had in TB that was similar? And you know, TB is a little bigger. Um, but like I said, we want guys that can catch the football, have good ball skills. Um, you know, they're, 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 they love the game. You know that's something that's something that some sometimes goes um, unnoticed. Is we want guys that love the game, that come to work every day, ready to go, bring positive energy, um, and then when they get on the field, you know they're coachable. They're going to do what we ask them to do, and then when the ball is thrown, they're going to make plays. And and he fits all those things. Yeah, I mean, you just you see a guy that wants to be a really good football player. Um, he does all the things that you would look for in terms of his work ethic, his preparation, uh, the things that he does uh, well amongst his teammates, the respect he's garnered from his teammates, uh, especially for you know being a transfer player as well. Um, you know, those guys, when you see guys earn a respect like that and earn a trust of, of one, a quarterback, and two, a coaching staff, um, those things go a long way. Uh, you know, Troy spent a ton of time with him again. Was at his pro day, so if there's things you want to add, Troy, to the his personality. But um, there's a lot of things to like about how he goes about his business. It fits right in with with what we want to do here and, and all the types of players uh, that we have in our locker room currently. How good is he in pre snap in terms of recognizing coverages? I mean, coverages are multiple in the NFL. They're disguised well and all that. Is he pretty good in terms of reading coverages and pre snap diagnosis? Yeah, just his middle makeup. He's a pro. Uh, when I went to his pro day, I mean, he he approaches the game, approaches his preparation like an NFL football player. And so he's not going to get distracted with all the other things. And he's going to be focused. He's going to come in here, learn the playbook, and he's going to compete. And that's what we need. And um, what was the what was the oh pre snap? Yeah, I mean, he he understands football, and so you know he's very aware of. Pre snap, we did. I had an hour Zoom with him, and and we went over coverages and different looks and talked football. And he was uh, he was an A, and so I'm excited to, for him to get in the building and 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 start learning this offense and getting on the field and showing what he can do. Ryan, so, so, the older side, he's you know 
know, 25 years old, you transferred twice, like you guys mentioned. Did that kind of factor in decision in being older, more experienced, kind of a veteran? No, oh, I think that what you're going to start seeing more and more, um, and you're seeing some in this draft as well, is with, with the college landscape the way it is, with the NIL money and guys going back to school, um, we're still dealing with players that have COVID eligibility still. So you're getting guys that are playing five and six years of college football. Um, and so that's just one of the things. Ideally, you'd love a guy that's always going to be 21 years old when he's coming out. But, um, you know, there's there's times and places now where that's going to be a little bit rare uh, as you get into some of these later rounds, guys that are playing five years of college football. And uh, I do think it does help these players that, that stay in a little bit longer. It gives them a chance to really grow um, and be developed in college. Uh, and then when they get here, they're a little bit more polished than maybe they would have been. But um, there's going to be that age discrepancy, I think, moving forward all the way around when you're talking about uh, guys going back to school and NIL money and all that, that's that's enticing players to stay in school as opposed to come out early. Prime, the second straight year, you have to wait until day three mm -hmm. to uh, get to have a pick, you know, a guy yeah. who kind of has one of your toys, essentially. Um, what's that wait like for you? I, I know frustrating is probably not the word. You want to build no. the team the right way. But what is it like waiting, waiting for that pick? You know, it's, um, it, it's, it's exciting for me to watch the guys that we've picked that help our team. Um, that's the best part about it is I know that uh, we have a lot of high regard for the for the guys that have, we got picked in the first three rounds. Those guys are good players and are really going to help us. Um, I'm a fan of, of helping the Bengals at the end of the day. Uh, I knew that this was going to be a draft where a lot of the fun offensive talent was probably going to go earlier in the rounds. Uh, there's going to be guys available that if we wanted them, we'd probably have to take them earlier than we were probably fully comfortable uh, doing so. And that's just the – that's the – product of our own success. That's a good problem to have. Uh, we're picking at the back of a round because we won a lot of games. Um, but that also doesn't necessarily always uh, allow you to have all the fun players that, that go earlier in rounds. And so that's OK. That, there's nothing wrong with that. We're going to find players that fit us and find guys that, that we think can contribute. And um, it's the benefit of having a, a really well-built roster. You know, I think we have a lot of spots on offense that are uh, accounted for you know there's a lot of places that uh, we could use some depth and some guys that can help us but um, we've got a really good roster across the board and um, I think that that helps too to not get too down on it when all the all the shiny shiny objects go well before we get a chance to pick at what point did you decide the name tag was appropriate uh I just felt you know I just felt like Lou had been down here so much I want to make sure you guys remembered who I was so Yeah. Um, you know, we, we feel good about where we're at a tight end. I know Zach touched on it in the pre-draft press conference. But, um, you know, Irv Smith was a, was a second-round pick. He's played a lot of football. He's a good player. Um, you know, we got Drew Sample back, who's done a lot of, a lot of things for us as a tight end. Um, and we got some guys that, that have played for us last year. Devin Asiasi played some roles for us. He was also, a, a, I think he was a second- or third-round pick as well. So, so we got guys that we feel like can be productive players. Um, we got some guys in the practice squad with Nick Bowers and Tanner Hudson that were interested to see how they contribute for us. Um, so we don't feel we didn't feel a pressing need. Certainly, if the right player was available at the right time, uh, you would pull a trigger on a, on a tight end uh, or a running back for that matter. But uh, the way the drafts unfolded is it's we feel good about who we have, and if we can keep adding players and adding depth uh, at the right spots, we'll feel good about it, and we'll, we'll be able to. I mean, we certainly still need, um, you know, just numbers wise, we need running backs. Uh, we definitely could use one more tight end potentially, depending on how that comes. But um, you know, we're we're looking at at depth positions and contributors in other ways other than just probably starting at this point. So um, have plenty of things to still address. There's plenty of picks to go still, um, but there's you know there's still some good players left too that that we feel really good about that can help us. You've had solid, reliable type return guys in recent years, but I'm not sure there's been a, a like a home run threat since Adam Jones was here. Mm -hmm. Is that a priority in this draft to try to get? Yeah, we're. I mean, that feels like for the last couple of years, we've we've always had our eye out for uh, a returner that we feels like could could help us uh, a little with a little bit more dynamic ability uh, in the return game as far as production goes in college. And there's plenty of those guys that exist. Sometimes they they fall to you at the pick that's appropriate. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes other teams pick them. Um, but we've we've certainly been on the lookout for that type of player should they fit. Um, it's always nice to have players that can give you value in special teams and still provide you some value on game day on offense as well, as opposed to, you know, just a one, uh, a one position player at that point uh, on game day. So, um, always looking to potentially find one that can do that. Um, they're harder to find than you would think, um, 
and there's just so many there's so so much less returns in the NFL these days that uh, you don't see as many guys out there breaking games open as returners although there's a few but um, yeah we're always on the lookout for guys that can make us more explosive and in all three phases as a returner special teams would certainly count You take that. Yeah. Um, to me, it's ball skills is probably number one, that you can throw the ball anywhere and he's going to find a way to, to make a play. And that's crucial in this league because most of the time you're going you're gonna to be – you're going to have a contested catch situation. You, rarely are you going to just create so much separation that, you know, you're going to be by yourself. And so to, to have great ball skills and be able to catch under pressure and with a guy on your back, um, to me, is his most impressive – um, feature. Speaking of depth, um, you know, Tyler Boyd ending the contract year, how important was it adding depth to that position knowing he's kind of getting up there in age? Yeah, that doesn't really factor in necessarily. Um, there's a lot of things that can happen between now and that point. Uh, but obviously, Tyler's proven himself to be arguably one of the best slot receivers in football. Um, and so all we were looking for is just to find ways to keep trying to upgrade our, our, our depth and our competition at the position. and. Uh, whether the contract would ever factor in at any point, that's that's a problem for down the road. Uh, we feel really good about the guys we have and what they bring to us, and uh, feel good about adding Charlie as as a depth piece in competition and see if we can get get the whole position better uh, from top to bottom. Jordan, is, he, is he the kind of guy that can you know, take someone out of the run game? How, how important is that when you're looking at great players? Very important. Um, I tell the guys that uh, we're not only catching the football, but we got to be able to block. We're an extension of the run game, and so. Uh, as you've seen the last few years, you know, T. Higgins, he'll go and stick his stick his nose in and block a safety. And, and so we expect all the receivers to to be physical enough to to go and block downfield and, and create big runs for the running backs. And so we don't want anybody that's scared or timid, and, and he's not that guy. In the AFC Championship game, T.D. got hurt on your first scoring drive, and his absence was felt. Could he have gone in in the slot and, you know, given you that kind of play? And that's the hope, you know. That's the hope that we've 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 got enough competition, and if he's gotten to that point, he's earned it. Um, I, I don't want to uh, diminish at all uh, the contribution that Trent Irwin has given us over the last couple of years. He's he's really stepped in and made some really big plays for us, um, and we've counted on him, and he's he's uh, he's answered that bell when we have. So uh, to to say that that Charlie's going to come in and, and take that spot uh, if if we need him to come do that, that's. Ideally, the hope when you're drafting players that they can ascend to those roles, but uh, he's got to come in and earn it, just like all these guys do. And uh, we got good players in our receiver room, guys. We got that have have uh, you know pelts on the wall, for lack of a better term, that have really done it for us in big moments. And um, Trent Irwin has as well. So uh, he's going to have to earn it. You know, Trent Taylor has been our returner, and he's done a nice job at it. So uh, nothing's getting handed to, to anybody at this point. Um, but uh, we just we feel like he's got a chance to really drive the competition and, and hopefully get the best out of everybody in that room. And uh, hopefully, if, if that's the case, he's ascended to that role. He certainly would have earned it. Um, and we feel like then at that point, he could help us win.